former player in the National Basketball Association, and he knows the Golden State Warriors very well. He's built himself quite the career broadcasting up there in the Bay Area, and he's uh, on the Warriors broadcasts. Joining me on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line, it's been a long time. Tom Tolbert back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How have you been, Tom? Good, Rich. Yourself? I'm fine. Are you going over the Golden Gate Bridge right now? Where are you going? Are you going to Treasure I, Island? I, I, I am not. I am uh, running some errands, uh, dropping some stuff off, getting some drinks for the granddaughter. Oh, and granddaughter? You know, basic, basic stuff. Your grandfather, Tom? I'm a grandfather. She's two years old. Dude. That is, the, that is the greatest. I, I, my, my mom and dad always used to tell me the best thing about being a grandparent is you give the child back at the end of the day. Just you take them. <laughs> right? Well, I, I wouldn't know that because actually, well, I, I did know for a while, but our granddaughter actually lives with us now with her son. So oh, she's, uh, man. she's there. She wakes up. She takes her nap. She gets up. She goes to bed. And she's there. And Lori and I, my wife, looked at each other one day and we said now we know why people our age don't have kids <laughs> now we know ah. they're exhausting I didn't, I didn't realize it when i was younger i thought oh this is great this is easy it's no big deal you get a little older it's like golly i'm i'm beat i didn't even do anything today and i'm beat i bet <laughs> so well ter- terrific congratulations on that and everything going on and uh certainly in the world you so we're so lucky when you know when you're ever you're on a beat or you're ever covering a team or you're associated with a team uh, through a broadcast that they're so terrific and so so great. Uh, walk me through this Warriors season and when um, you know that the team felt it could be special, Tom. Uh, well, I, I thought early on they would be one of a handful of teams that could compete for a championship. I always felt like it was them, Phoenix, uh, Boston. But this was really early on. Then I said, not Boston. Then I got back to Boston. But anyway, Milwaukee, uh, New Jersey, if they were healthy. I thought there were like five teams that had a chance to win a championship. And I always thought they were one of them, just because uh, I've seen this team play for years and years now. And I know the composition, the makeup of this team. So I always felt like they had a chance. There were times during the season where the defense wasn't great or the offense wasn't great. I thought, well, you know what? They need to kind of kick it in gear a little bit. But I never thought this was going to be a favorite to win the championship, Rich. I just thought they were going to be one of a a few teams that have a chance to win a championship. And there they are. They're really good defensively, really good offensively. And they're probably where they felt like they belonged all along. So um, what insight can you give us, Tom Tolbert, on Clay Thompson? Because the general sense is he's Clay, and, you know, now that he's back, of course he's just going to keep splashing in threes. And game five, Clay showed up, and it looks like they're going to get the Clay Thompson we've all know, come to know and love uh, for the NBA Finals. But what insight do you have on his comeback, his rehab, everything that happened in the setback, another injury, and so on and so forth, Tom? Well, I tell you what, if you know him, you, you – wouldn't be happier for a person to return to to playing basketball at a high level. I mean, this guy loves basketball. I mean, he just loves it, and he, he's so funny. He, he has you know, his videos. Uh, I think it's Instagram or whatever. He's out on the bay on his boat, got his captain's hat out on, just kind of tooling around the bay, and just you know, he'll take shots of himself tripping around the Bay Area. I mean, he loves the bay. Loves his dog, loves hanging out, but he really loves basketball and loves competing. I can't imagine what it was like to get injured the first time and then almost come back and get injured again with the Achilles and then have to sit out another <laughs> year to miss what you really love doing. So I'm, I'm so happy for that guy to be able to come back and play. He's not quite the same player. Like, he still has some really good nights, and I'm sure he'll have at least one or two during the finals, but... You know, the shot isn't quite as consistent as it once was. Defensively, he's not quite what he was. But, you know, he's getting a little bit older and coming back from two catastrophic injuries. But, yeah, like I said, if anybody knew him, they'd just be thrilled that this guy's able to get back and compete because you just can't help but love that guy. And so what what about this team uh, continues to click? Is it Curry's, you know, consistency? Is it Draymond Green's? presence um what why does it it occurs coaching what what is it tom for this team you know rich i think it's just a combination of of everything i think their defense like when they play really good basketball 
I think their defense is the backbone of the team. Like, they're really good defensively. You don't really think of them as a defensive team because Steph and Clay, Jordan Poole now, you think of them as an offensive team, but they can be a really good offensive team, but when they're good, they're consistently good defensively. And Draymond Green, it was funny, I asked Steve Kerr last week, I said, you've been a good defensive team now for like seven years. That's been a common thread of the Kerr era, ball movement, player movement, defense. And I said, you've been a good defensive team, really good defensive team for seven years. What's the thread? He just said, Draymond Green. <laughs> and that's really what it is. I mean, Draymond's one of the more unique defenders uh, ever in the NBA and one of the best defenders ever in the NBA. He's so versatile. He's so, so smart. He's one of those guys, you see it in every sport, guys that are ahead of the play. He's ahead of the play. He's never behind the play. In football parlance, he's ahead of the chains, always. He sees what's coming before it comes. He's not behind the play. He's not reactive. Uh, he's one of the best, if not the best, help defender I've ever seen in basketball. So he just he, he gets them to where they need to be, offensively too, in sets and stuff like that, but defensively, He's like the the maestro out there, and he is he's, he's something special. You watch him play. He's one of those guys you can't tell how great he is by the stats. You look at the stats, you look and go, nah, whatever. Nine points, ten rebounds, seven assists. Nah, okay. Numbers are okay. But you can't tell the impact that guy has on the basketball court by, by stats. He's one of the few guys that you have to watch him play, and you have to watch him play over and over and over again to really appreciate how great that guy is. Is it fair to say, Tom Tolbert, that we saw Kerr's value when Mike Brown was uh, filling in and the team struggled mightily against Memphis in a way that we didn't see? And it looked like the team, you know, Barkley was right in calling them out. It looked like they were playing a scrimmage. They were just doing stuff, throwing the – throwing, uh, you know – throwing up shots out of rhythm, being out of, uh, you know, rhythm uh, uh, defensively. Is it fair to say that about that moment, Tom? Trust me, Rich. I've seen them play with Steve, and they look like they're screwing around out there sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I'm serious. They just – sometimes they just do stuff. You're like, what are you doing? Or what was that pass? What was that? Or or, are you just – so I don't know. I mean, you know, the last time Steve was out, Mike Brown was 11-0. Uh, in the playoffs, so I, I Mike Brown can coach. I don't know. It's just them. I don't know what it is to be honest with you. But I, like I said, I, I've seen it when Steve's there. He'll be there coaching, and they just they just like they they lose themselves somehow. It's like what are we doing out here? What do you get? What are you guys doing? So I, I I wouldn't blame that on Coach Brown at all. I, I always I'm not one that gives too much credit or too much blame to the coaches. It's a players' league, and players know what to do. And players are grown-ups, and players know the right play to make, and players know uh, how to come prepared. And if players don't come prepared, and players do stupid stuff on the court, and players aren't paying attention to what they should be paying attention to, then, well, uh, that, that's on the player to me. I mean, at this, at this stage of your game, you don't need your coach to hold your hand for, for 48 minutes. You should know what the hell you're doing. You've been taught well enough. You should be able to go out there and play. And if you don't, that's on you. So I, 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 I rarely give the coaches, too, like I said, too much credit, too much blame. Players know what the hell they're doing. Just go do it. Golden State Warriors radio color analyst uh, Tom Tolbert here on the Rich Eisen Show. What's Jordan Poole's future looking like, do you think? Like, what, what, is it, what, is it, what does it look like with Curry playing as incredibly well as he is and does um, and, and Poole showing a, a superstar ability? I think we could say that. What, what do you think his future a, looks like right that's now? That's a good question, Rich. Uh, oof, man, I mean, he's worked so hard to get himself where he is right now. He's a legit third scoring option and sometimes second scoring option, hmm. uh, the way he can score. Defensively, he's got to get better. Uh, sometimes he gets a little loose with the ball, but I think sky's the limit for this guy. I mean, I think those things are things that could be tightened up and worked on, but some of the things he has, the quick explosiveness, the the stroke is is impressive. He's just really good. And I would have never guessed this a year ago. I mean, when he went down to the G League, came back up, I thought, yeah, maybe, maybe the Warriors get a rotational piece out of this. 
Uh, he's much more than a rotational piece. I mean, he is a key cog in this team's wheel right now. So I, all credit to this guy because I'll be honest, he was kind of uh, kind of teetering on is this guy going to be in the league or not. Like he, he, he could go either way. He'll probably stick, but we'll kind of rotate it. Will he get uh, consistent time? And now look at him. He's in the finals, and he's a big part of this team. It didn't get he didn't get there without work though. It's pretty impressive stuff. So he's got a long term future there. Do you think? I mean, I think well, so. I mean, I think well, they're going to have to figure some stuff out because I think Wiggins is up after next year, and I think they really want to keep him. But then you get Jordan Poole who's up, and I think he can sign an extension this summer or wait until after the following year where he'd be as restricted free agent, if I'm not mistaken, which I very well am. Uh, I don't I don't know what they're going to do. I'll be honest. I mean, Joe, one thing about Joe Lacob and Peter Goober is if you can help them win, they'll pay for you. I mean, they are so far from the luxury tax. I mean, it's insane. And people, people were complaining this year about, hey, we got a roster spot open. Maybe we should go get a center. It's like, well, what? Ooh, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> Like this guy, this this guy will spend money. He will. Uh, I think he's like was like seventy million over the luxury tax or something ridiculous like that. But that's the one thing I love about him. I hate owners. I hate owners. I'm a sports fan. I want my owner to be a sports fan. I want my owner to want to win a championship. I don't want my owner to be a penny pitcher. I don't want my owner to think you know I don't want to lose too much money this year. I mean, I, I would think if you own a team. You've already made your money elsewhere. You're going to make more money. There's no doubt about it. But it's okay to lose a little bit here and there. You're trying to win a championship. You're a fan of the team. Too many owners aren't fans of the sport, fans of the team, and they run it like a business, and it just drives me nuts. Phil Leica runs it like a business, but first and foremost, he's a fan, and he wants to see this team win. And Peter Goober, too. They want to see the team win, and I really appreciate that. So. Yes, Jordan Poole will be here. Long, long, long winded answer to your sure. question. I think Jordan Poole will be here, but, you know, they do have some decisions uh, to make. But it would surprise me if he weren't a warrior for uh, for years to come. Plus, just sit around and you'll get your center back next year. I mean, James Wiseman is sitting there. I mean, the first overall pick from yeah. two years ago is just sitting there. I mean, so, uh, but for the here and now, Tom Tolbert, uh, does Gary Payton the second come back? That was the whole conversation is that it's possible he could if they make the finals. They've made the finals. Can he? What do you think? I think he will. I think so. I think that's what they're hoping for. And from my conversations with him, I think they're, 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 it's a pretty decent percent chance that he will be back at some point during the, during the finals. Now, I don't know if, they'll, you know if there could be setbacks, I guess, or maybe it just doesn't feel quite right. But yeah, I think I think he'll be back, and that'll be a big cog in the in the wheel because he's really good defensively, and he can really make those guys work. He can make Brown work, he can make Tatum work a little bit, and he doesn't got to give you a ton of minutes. Fifteen minutes is, is is good enough to get in there and just be be a pass. And he really runs his butt off too. Like hey, fast break, they're always in fast break mode when he's in there because he can really go and he runs the court really hard. So. I would think that he'll be back. Uh, I think they're planning on him being back. Things change, but, yeah, I would hope so. It'd be be good to see him back, too, for a guy that's had to go through the stuff he has. He's 29 years of age. uh, To miss the playoffs or after the Memphis uh, series was that second game, third second game, I believe, or first game, uh, was a bummer. I felt bad for him. I was like, ah, dang, this is one chance. He's getting a chance to play, to be in the playoffs, experience this. And then to go out, but if he were to come back for the finals against the Celtics, that'd be pretty sweet. Tom Tolbert, a few minutes left uh, with him right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Do you like the Jimmy Butler shot at the end of Game 7? Down 2, 17 seconds to go. It's a 3. It's in transition. Horford's backing up. Do you like it? Yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, he's not a great 3-point shooter. That's the only kind of drawback. He's not a great 3-point shooter, although he has been shooting them better the last, like, two, three games. He's making a few of them. So I didn't mind it. I know what people were thinking. He could attack Horford, go to the rim. And, yeah, I mean, I get it. You could. You could also go to the rim and get your shot blocked. You could also take another dribble and dribble it off your foot. I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen. 
he knew right then he was going to get a clean look at a three-pointer. And I think, to be honest, they were just – they were fatigued. I think they were spent. And I don't know if it entered his mind, but maybe he just thought, let's go for it. Let's let's try to get this over with and see if we can take take the lead here because we don't have enough gas for overtime. Because that was like a war of attrition. Both those teams are limping to the – to the finish line, and I'm not sure if Miami had enough to get to the finish line if they had to add five more minutes to the race. So, yeah, I, I didn't mind that shot. I mean, it was this wide-open shot, transition, great look. No, I, I, I had no problem with that shot. So the minute that front rims and then the uh, the, the Celtics win and Steve Kerr and the, and the staff start grinding tape on the Celtics, what do you think they're seeing that concerns them the most for this matchup? <laughs> Tom. We're seeing a lot of big athletic bodies that can really defend. The the Boston Celtics are unlike most teams in that there is not one person you could find in that starting lineup that you could pick out and try to go at defensively. I mean, these guys are really, really good. Smart, Brown, Tatum, Horford, Williams. I mean, they can all defend. And they can all switch off if they have to. And they can all stay in front of players. They all have length. They can all get into you and be physical. So they're really, I mean, they're the best defensive team in the league. And the numbers prove it. And they were by far and away the best defensive team in the league after the first of the year. So it's going to be, it can be tough. But the Warriors have a great defense, too. They're probably the two best defensive teams in the league. So points might be at a premium in this series. Uh, the Warriors, I think, have a little more, just a little more diversity offensively and maybe a little more firepower offensively than the Celtics. But it's going to be, I think it's a coin flip. I really do. I think it's going to be a great series. Uh, it's what I was, I was kind of hoping for this one mm. just because it's the Celtics have the most championships in NBA history, and I just I, – I, I grew up on Celtics-Lakers. So Celtics in the finals is like kind of a cool cool thing. And the fact that the Warriors get to face them, not sure if the coaches feel the same way. <laughs> I think they, they're like, I'm like, gee, I'm going to score on these guys. These guys, they held them to 32 points at home earlier this year. 32 the Warriors had them, and they just suffocated. They couldn't, couldn't do anything against them and then the second half Steph got hurt at the end of the first half and they ended up losing but I mean they're good I mean they're it, it, I'm excited about this finals I think it's going to be a lot of fun tactically speaking athletically spe- speaking Brown and Tatum are, are studs and Smart is uh, Smart's basically Draymond Green he's a 6'4 Draymond Green is what he is he plays a different position but he's super smart super physical uh, knows what he's doing out there defensively so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I can't wait. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I think they're going to be close games, uh, tight games, maybe not super high scoring, but it should be a fun series. Although Draymond plays the point sometimes too. So, you know, yes, so, he does. so, so, so yes, Horford's in the game. Does, who does Dray, what you put Looney on him? And what, are we going to see Draymond on Tatum sometimes? I mean, like, what do you, what do you uh, see? What do you see there? Well, it's interesting because in the NBA now, they just run pick and roll until they figure out who they want on you. <laughs> uh, that's, that's all it is. It's like a high pick and roll league. Right. You watch basketball now. If you don't like high pick and rolls, you might as well turn it off and go watch something else because you'll see about a thousand of those every game. Uh, now, Draymond's not a guy you try to get on you. Draymond's a guy you try to get off of, right. off of you. But I would imagine they'll match up you know, by position. A lot of times you'll see in games where it gets – you know, depending on if a guy can score or not, they'll put a guard on him because they know you're not going to go to him. But I would think it'll be, you know, Steph on Smart, Clay on Brown, Wiggins on Tatum, mm. Draymond on Horford, and then Looney on Williams. I would, I would think that's the way they'll go. I mean, you could flip flop five and four if you wanted to. You could flip flop uh, Draymond and Loon, but the other ones got to be. I mean, they got. But again, they're going to be all. So everybody's got to guard somebody a little bit. But what the Warriors did a really good job of last game, they kept trying to get uh, switch Curry onto Doncic, and what they did is they called a hedge, and Curry would hedge out and stay, 
until Wiggins got back. So he allowed Wiggins enough time to get back, and then he would fire back to, to his guy or go to the middle of the paint and then rotate out. But they weren't going to let him just go at, go at Steph. So I don't know what the Celtics would do. I, mean, I would imagine let's already go at Steph a little bit because he's not a bad defender at all. He's just the weak link on this team. I mean, it, it's a really good defensive team. So, uh, yeah, I would, I would think uh, Dray, but Dray, look, Draymond, if you watch Draymond, uh, you take a few series and just watch him. He always has his head on a swivel. He always sees what's going on, and he's always able to come over and help. Like, if somebody gets beat, he's there. He just knows what's going on. And I find myself sometimes just watching him. I won't even watch the ball. I'll just watch Draymond and kind of watch him and see what he does on the defensive end. It really is kind of fun. I, I know people are like, well, you're kind of weird. But, yeah, I am. But still, <laughs> it's pretty cool to do, and you understand him a lot better as a player if you do that. Tom, enjoy the finals. Uh, look for my call during it. L- love your insight, as always. Appreciate the time. Anytime, Rich. Look for it. You got it. Thanks for call. That's Tom Tolbert right here in the Rich Eisen Show driving around Grandpa, Grandpa Tom. <laughs> right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.